Hello, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The Next Rail planning team has just revealed the top scoring corridors for expanding the city's streetcar line. The top three choices include Main Street Plus, which means expanding south from Union Station to a point beyond the plaza. Also an east to west corridor along either 31st Street or Linwood, and also Independence Avenue. The Streetcar Advisory Committee also suggested looking at a fourth corridor, which would include Southwest Boulevard connecting east through the crossroads to the 18th and Vine Jazz District. The Next Rail team made the recommendations after gathering public reaction to eight possible expansion routes. The scoreboard gave the most weight to potential economic development. The City Council will make the final decision on which corridors are submitted for detailed environmental and engineering studies. In other streetcar developments, the streetcar maintenance facility has been dedicated in honor of Kite Singleton, a longtime transit advocate. The facility will be built in the River Market area at 3rd and Holmes, and the City Council has approved the purchase of four streetcars for the downtown route along Main Street. They will be delivered next year. Learn more at kcstreetcar.org. Mayor Sly James, along with Kansas City, Kansas Mayor Mark Holland and Code for America, announced the launch of BizFriendly, an online resource providing entrepreneurs with free and easy-to-use tools to help them grow their business. BizFriendly features understandable lessons created by business owners for business owners. It also encourages entrepreneurs to create and share their own lessons and expertise with the community. Visit bizfriend.ly and see if this tool can help you. And speaking of innovative online tools, the city manager's office recently launched the KCSTAT dashboard at kcstat.kcmo.org. This dashboard provides an at-a-glance view of the city's progress towards its public infrastructure and economic development goals. The KCSTAT dashboard complements the city's monthly KCSTAT meeting, during which the mayor, city manager, and other city leaders meet to measure progress with city services. The KCSTAT dashboard is part of a larger goal toward more open and accountable government and will soon feature progress in other categories, including public safety and neighborhood livability. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. The year is winding down, but there's no shortage of free and low-cost things to do. Mark your calendars and bring your friends and family. Out-of-town guests are welcome, too. A free traveling exhibit that tells the stories of Missouri residents during the Civil War is open on Saturday afternoons from 1 to 4 p.m. through December 22nd at the Battle of Westport Museum in Swope Park. The exhibit, called The State Divided, The Civil War in Missouri, includes stories of families struggling to survive, African-American soldiers in Missouri, and the Battle of Westport. Veterans Day is Monday, November 11th. Join a public celebration of their service at the National World War I Museum at Liberty Memorial. A color guard parade begins at 9.15 a.m., followed immediately by a rousing performance of the American Legion Band. A ceremony honoring veterans is set for 11 a.m. And here's a bonus. The museum is free and open to the public the entire day. Bring home a Thanksgiving turkey, if you're lucky, at Turkey Bowling on Ice from 2 to 3 p.m. Saturday, November 23rd. Frozen turkeys replace bowling balls at this fun family event at the Lion Creek Community Center and Ice Arena at 5940 Northwest Wacomus Drive. The $6 fee includes skate rental. Santa is coming and bringing Santa's Wonderland to several Kansas City parks this holiday season. Spend an evening celebrating with festive live music, entertainment by the Starlight Stars, hot chocolate, light displays, and of course, a visit from Santa and his friends. The event is free and will be held at four locations from Thursday, December 5th through Sunday, December 8th. For more information about these locations and other events, see the Parks and Recreation website at kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Considering the large number and the long history of women working at KCPD, it's surprising it took this long to organize, 
but KCPD had its first ever women's lunch this week. Of course, it was open to anyone. Deputy Chief Cheryl Rose explains its purpose. Well, we just started this, we called it a women's lunch, and but we made it inclusive for everyone. Anyone could attend, male, female, civilian, law enforcement, wherever they worked. And the idea was to bring people together, namely women that don't have an opportunity to get to know each other and other facets of the job because we have over 2,000 people. So if I worked midnights at, say, Metro Patrol and I worked days up at Shoal Creek, we may have never had an opportunity to know each other. And the purpose is to get together and talk about issues that might be impacting us or just department-wide issues. So it's kind of a fellowship, um, just get together and, and interact. There isn't a real structure right now because we wanted to put it to the group to see what they wanted to do because so many things get structured with a president, a vice president, you gotta follow Robert's rules. This is just informal, bring your sack lunch, let's talk. We asked the group today if they wanted to have topics or they like the informal and they, they like both. They like the informal opportunity to just sit and talk. But I think also we talked about a couple of issues, so I think it'll be a blend of both. There's more camaraderie between women than what I experienced when I first came on and, and trying to make that how it is for the future females that come on the department. Well, so I think it's been proven that women are better communicators because of, in police work especially, our physical size for the most part is much smaller than, than our, the male uh, public. And even a man that's my same size is physically stronger. And so women rely on, and I don't think it's just from police work, I think women in general across society rely on communication skills to navigate their way through the world. And yeah, I, there are studies that have proven women police officers get into less physical confrontations, and I believe that's why. There are a lot of opportunities for women on our police department. You know, we can do any job, the canine, the helicopter, patrol, administrative, teach at the academy. So it, it's an excellent job for women. And we encourage women, if they have any interest at all, to contact us because we're always looking to get good people on our department. 13.7% of KCPD officers are women, which is just slightly above the national average of 13%. However, 29% of our current academy class are women. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Looking ahead, the city will begin its second round of curbside leaf and brush pickup the week of November 18th in the city's south zone. The second collection for north zone residents will be the week of December 2nd, and central zone starts December 9th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org trash and click on leaf and brush collection. In observance of the Veterans Day holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Monday, November 11th. Residents who usually have Monday trash collection will receive that service on Tuesday, November 12th. Residents who usually have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday, November 16th. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the weekly report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.